All the major news stories made simple and easy for your listening pleasure. We'll break it down for you in key words for the segment. We're joined by Adam. Good morning. Well, hello, Lena. <laughs> Happy Wednesday to you. Happy Wednesday. How are things? I think pretty good. Yeah. yeah. For a hump day, it's not too shabby. Yeah. Are you a, are you a fan of Su'upa? The, the, ah! the famous, the, you gave away the uh, answer. Oh, so, oh sorry. <laughs> I'm just I abbreviated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The TV uh, yeah. dance competition show that I did not really discreetly give away right. anyway. I'm a yeah. big fan. Yeah. Did I tell you I grew up a dancer? So yeah. that's it's it's my thing. I'm not right. a good dancer anymore. However, uh. <laughs> okay. wa- watching it is I mean I appreciate the comp- You emphasize that very loud, <laughs> loud strongly. <laughs> the thing is you, you stop practicing and it's just it's just gone yeah. in a moment. But yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan. How about yourself? I've taken great interest because uh, I I dabbled in a bit of dance myself. Now back in the you day. learn something new every day. <laughs> there is your TMI. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, TMI for the day. Adam used to break dance. I yeah. used to, yeah, yeah. study ballet professionally yeah, too. Yeah. So of course we are. We have a, a, <laughs> a, a an interest in these type of programs. Yeah. I guess yeah. it, it turns out it's very successful, especially for a cable yeah. show. I mean, the thing is, for cable shows, you stay to even surpass one percent mark. Right. That's a big, big sign of praise yeah. and approval. And Super has already done that. Yeah, I mean, it was really surprising because that kind of genre of mm. program or. Yeah. Uh, Competition shows, competition, a competition in dance, especially yeah. on TV, yeah. uh, it hasn't really been popular. It's been a very no. niche market. We've had so you think you can dance, kind of like the Korean version of it yeah. on the same network. It didn't do well. Yeah. Uh, we had those celebrities pair up with professional dancers yeah. that didn't do so didn't well either. either. But so this is a pleasant surprise. It is. Maybe stars have aligned. I mean, sometimes it's about yeah. timing, and it's yeah. my God, we can go on, on this topic for <laughs> hours, couldn't we? Or it could well, be girl power. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right, all that discussion to be elaborated on further <laughs> with Patricia in just a moment. It's time for us to dabble in some keyword news. This is our first pick of the day. Virus reproduction rate. That was kind of an abrupt shift, wasn't mm. it? Uh, we're going to start out with our COVID-19 coverage. Uh, daily COVID cases seem to be dropping for the country, but officials are still on alert over a potential spike. Following two long weekends, that's Chuseok and National mm. Foundation Day. We have another coming mm-hmm. up this week. And now uh, the virus reproduction rate has also gone up, fueling those concerns. So what's the latest, on them? Yes, the KDCA is warning that it's still relatively early in the week because of Monday being a day off. So usually at this time we'll start to see a pickup in cases right. but since Monday was a, a red day yeah. a day off uh, it's kind of been delayed uh, somewhat uh, and it adds that the trend of early week lows and midweek highs of cases could shift about a day or two uh, the same will probably go for next week as well because of course next Monday is also uh, a holiday now the country is also still feeling the effects from the Chuzak holiday period as well um, and the capital area is also where most of the daily infections are being reported uh, though non-capital areas are also seeing a rise in cases as well. Mm. Now, eight out of the top ten areas where infection rates are the highest, they're actually all in Seoul okay. at the moment. Mm. Uh, that's according to the Democratic Party's lawmaker, Namin Sun, who cited KDCA data. Mm. At the very top was actually Tegu in mm. terms of in, uh, infection rate. Mm. Now, the virus reproduction rate has also been increasing, as you said, for the past four weeks. It was 0.9. Nine eight four weeks ago. Last week it was one point two. So there has been a rise over the past uh, month. Mm. Uh, that is the highest since the third week of July. Now a reading above one that means the virus is spreading at a faster pace. So if that rate increases, and mm. of course that means it is a cause for concern. All right. Uh, speaking of uh, vaccinating more people, which seems to be the only way for us to address this issue going forward. Mm-hmm. This is our second keyword of the day. Vaccinating minors. Uh, vaccinations for minors and teenagers, particularly kicking off in the country, the government has decided to announce the reservation numbers for that age group every day just to keep tabs. Mm. Uh, tell us more. Yeah, so you think that they would do that anyway, but there has been a bit of uh, a mm-hmm. bit of uh, re- uh, mulling over uh, mm-hmm. that was needed for mm-hmm. this uh, particular announcement. Because um, it's not necessarily required. It's just uh, right. a, a big recommendation it coming is. from the KDCA. It is. Uh, so they didn't really want to give mixed messages. So they were very hesitant on it, but I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Just a quick recap, uh, vaccine reservations for 16 and 17-year-olds, they kicked off yesterday Mm -hmm. at 8 p.m., if you remember. Uh, Those between the ages of 12 to 15, they'll be able to make reservations from 8 p.m. on October 18th. That will run through November 12th. 
Uh, uh, Health authorities say they will now include the daily reservation numbers for those groups in the KDCA's daily briefings. Now, the government has been hesitant to reveal those numbers due to concerns it could seem officials were pressuring youngsters to get vaccinated. Mm. And that certainly isn't the message that they're trying to give out. Uh, But after discussions with the Education Ministry, health officials changed their mind. The ministry, however, is urging them to avoid creating an atmosphere where youngsters feel they do need to get uh, pressured to get Mm. shot. Mm. And it also seems there are some mixed reactions as well from young people and their parents on vaccinations for young people. Mm. Uh, Some are eager to get vaccinated as soon as possible. It tends to be in the the higher years of high school where Mm. they're uh, preparing for exams or students in dormitories right. for example if they're going to boarding school uh, but others are also hesitant out of fears of side effects and because of uh, still a bit of lack of data mm. over the effect efficacy and safety uh, when it comes to young age groups uh, and vaccines all right because there are two very contrasting i, I guess views of the vaccines for right. minors in general mm. uh, that's why the hesitation as to whether we should reveal numbers for mm. vaccinating these uh, well teenagers in the first yeah. place but going forward they will reveal those data, right? They will. All right, on to our third keyword of the day. Work together. Shouldn't we all? Mm-hmm. Uh, Foreign Minister Chung Yong is in France to attend a ministerial council meeting of the OECD. He's delivered remarks on the pandemic and the international community's role to tackle it together. What did he have to say? Yeah, so Chung has urged each country to do more to overcome the pandemic. He noted that while vaccinations have been accelerating, that would not be enough. Uh, he called for sharing relevant information in relation to the pandemic, uh, adding that borders must be opened for vaccines and treatments to be shared globally. Uh, He explained Seoul's contribution of $200 million to COVAX AMC, as well as efforts to provide antivirus support to some 120 countries to help them with COVID-19 responses. Now, COVAX AMC is an international mechanism intended to provide vaccines to developing countries at low cost. Uh, Tong also stressed the important role the OECD has to play in eradicating inequality in income, jobs and education, which all, of course, have been uh, dealt a blow due to the pandemic. All right. Collaboration on a number of different fronts. Right. On to our fourth keyword of the day. Online shopping surge. Because we really didn't have any other (laughs) options during the pandemic, wasn't this at a certain point encouraged? Uh, Recent data showing that Koreans are spending more online amid the pandemic run us through the latest figures. Certainly. Uh, Data from Statistics Korea shows that online shopping transactions in August amounted to nearly 16 trillion won. That's up by nearly 17% from a year earlier. Mm. Uh, More and more of that shopping was done using mobile phones. It rose nearly 23% on year to 11.5% trillion won. Uh, mobile transactions accounted for 72% of all online purchases. That's hit an all-time high. Mm. Now, of course, online food delivery services, uh, groceries, as well as electrical goods were among the highest to rise. They kind of led the whole uh, increase. Mm. Spending on cosmetics, interestingly, <laughs> went down. I mean, of you introduce the face mask, you don't meet as many people, we give our skin a break? Could be, but uh, yeah, of course, we are in the midst of a pandemic. A lot of people are staying at home, so, yeah. you know, maybe they're not. <laughs> no need for the makeup, I guess. It's really interesting because I, I was just telling our producer, I, I, I've forgotten how to apply <laughs> makeup. It's kind of sad. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, so that's that's one of our estimations, anyhow. Well, well yeah, it's a very mm. uh, a fitting trend, if you mm. will. Uh, mm. But uh, they mm. have gone down, though. Uh, mm. The rise in food purchase could be also attributed to preparations for the Chuzak holiday. This sure. is the August figures, and of course, Chuzak holiday was in September. There are a lot of people who do make early preparations. So And send yeah. food gifts send to food gifts, loved of course, ones and colleagues to, and so on. Forward. Yeah, to avoid that uh, delay in, uh, shipping. Parcel, in shipping and parcel <laughs> deliveries as well, which can be very hectic during the holidays. All right, moving on to our fifth key word of the day. Global su- uh, supply chain shock. That is a bit of a tongue twist. <laughs> Global supply chain shock. You're right. Yeah. Uh, the, the why, why do the electricity crisis in China due mainly to a continued coal shortage is threatening the stability of global supply chains once more? Mm. This is also affecting certain Korean businesses. So let's get the latest. Yes, the steel, semiconductor and battery sectors, they're among the uh, worst hits because mm. of this uh, power and supply shortage right, in China. Right. Uh, the lack of raw material simply and the rise in prices of those 
windows available is affecting the production of Korean firms in China as well. Uh, for example, a price surge in iron ore and other raw materials used for steel production is making the situation worse uh, uh, for POSCO, mm. which is the nation's top um, steel maker. Mm. It already has been forced to reduce operations for nearly two weeks at its uh, stainless steel plant in China's eastern uh, Jiangsu province. Now, regarding semiconductors, industry sources say the power shortage could affect the production of automotive chips, which is already falling short of demand. Mm. Um, This, in turn, may deal a blow to global car makers as well, not just Korean ones. Uh, Korean firms in China are frequently forced to suspend operations as well, not just POSCO and all these other uh, semiconductor makers, such as Samsung and SK Hynix, uh, as provincial governments there are limiting or suspending power supply due to Beijing's um, unofficial import mm. ban on Australian coal in response to this uh, diplomatic uh, row that they're having at the moment. Right. And Australian coal actually accounts for nearly one third of China's coal imports, so it's certainly no small amount. Uh, battery production for electric vehicles is also taking a hit, uh, as most materials needed for battery production comes from China as well. Uh, Korean battery makers are okay for the moment, according to experts, but there are fears that if the power shortage in China does continue for a long time, they too will be dealt a massive blow. Now, with domestic production and consumption, as well as investments also declining in China, uh, the situation may actually impact Korean exports as Mm -hmm. well, uh, which has been uh, enjoying quite a bit of a surge recently. Uh, China is Korea's biggest trading partner. Over 21% of exports uh, from Mm. Korea actually go to China. So there is um, fears that it could uh, lose its winning streak for the year. Yeah. All right. And on to our last keyword of the day. Soft power. So experts in the United States and Korea have weighed in on Korea's influence in the world. They mm. say the country is not using what they dub soft power to good use. Mm. Tell us a little bit more about this concept and what was said. Yeah, this is a, a bit of an abstract news story, if you will, but it is an interesting one nonetheless. <laughs> and the experts were speaking at an online event co-sponsored by the Korea Foundation and Center for International and Strategic Studies. That is a Washington-based think tank. Uh, they say Korea enjoys a vast amount of what they call soft power uh, in the international community, but has to contribute more diplomatically to the global community to be able to put its newly found influence to use. Mm. They also argue that an expansion and right use of this so-called soft power may help Korea improve its ties with other countries, including ones with frosty uh, ties, such as Japan. Mm. Now, Harvard professor Joseph Nye coined the term soft power. He says it comes from three major sources, the country's culture, its values in the domestic domain and legitimate international policies. Mm. Other experts in the event pointed to Korea's soft power in the cultural side being particularly strong, including K-pop and Korean dramas, especially uh, the recent one on Netflix, Mm. um, uh, Squid Game, (laughs) uh, that has, uh, of course, been very popular overseas and now here in Korea. But they noted that uh, their popularity can be helpful economically, but they alone cannot help achieve the country's global objectives. Mm. And they say Korea needs is what they call uh, a closer to have a substantial ah. global influence. So they say all this attractive K-pop and K-drama is all well and right. good. Right. Um, but what they closes need, the deal? What closes the deal? That is something that they uh, assess that Korea lacks at the moment. All right. Uh, this was definitely abstract, but an yeah. important point of discussion, is it yeah. not? We might steal this story for a question unboxing in the near future. <laughs> Thank you very much, Adam. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.